Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Epic 7 tier list for you guys today. And today we're going to be updating the 4 star PvE tier list for Epic 7. Now we're including RGB units and ML units as well. So you're going to see every single 4 star in the game that is available or actually may not be available. And we'll talk about those units as well. Now on this list guys, you might notice that we are missing one unit. If I'm missing any more, let me know. I've literally scanned through this tier list like a thousand times and I can't seem to find Leo. If you guys can actually find Leo here, uh, let me know that I missed it. But I literally went through this entire list like a million times and I just couldn't find him. Um, if you guys are wondering where Leo is, he will be in this hunt one shot section. So that being said, let's actually talk about what these tiers represent. So starting from the top, this red tier is going to be the very powerful tier. So this is pretty self-explanatory. These units are very good. You can always build them for PvE and they will do very, very well. Now there might be some other five-star units out there that are better than them, but if you build these units, you can't go wrong. Next, we have the decent tier list. These units are going to be pretty close to very powerful, but you, know, you don't really want to build them unless you have to. Uh, if you're looking to slot them into a certain role and you don't have any other options for it, then, then you can actually use them. But for the most part, these units, you know, you want to think a little bit before actually building them and, you know, fully six starring them and actually skill enhancing them because they actually will have some replacements later on. Next, we have the specific niche. So this tier is going to be basically for units that are very, very, very powerful in like one or two areas of content, usually going to be like Abyss Force and stuff like that, or um, other, you know, very minuscule areas of content. And for that reason, you, know, you don't really want to build them all the way. In this tier, the best way to actually tackle this is to put these units to five star only, and then use them, and then don't really invest too much into them because you're not going to use them for that long. Next, we have the Hunt One Shot tier. Pretty self-explanatory, these units are going to be used to actually one-shot hunt, and that's pretty much it. And the don't use tier, also pretty self-explanatory, just don't build these units for PvE. Some of these units might be very powerful for PvP, but for the most part, for PvE guys, you don't really want to use them. Uh, for example, like Assassin Sid, extremely, extremely strong for PvP, especially if you have very good speed gear. But for PvE, he's not really that great. So starting off with the very powerful tier, we actually have Angelica. So Angelica, very powerful Soul Weaver. You actually get her at the start of the game for free. You'll be able to access her basically in the first like hour of playing the game. She's extremely powerful because she has a lot of raw healing. She has cleansing and immunity. You can use her as her first as your first Wyvern tank, and she's very strong. And in other areas of content, you can bring her, and she's very very powerful. The uh, thing is, she will get replaced by Tamarin later on, and even Dien. But until you get those units, which are both 5-star units and their banners don't run too often, Angelica's a very good choice. And even if you do get those units, Angelica can, can still be used in your Wyvern team and also on your PvP defense team as well. Next, we have Free Spirit Tieria. So Free Spirit Tieria, guys, also free to play from connections. Extremely powerful AoE farmer. You can use her in Adventure. You can use her in Raid. You can use her in Abyss. You can just pretty much bring her anywhere because she does, she does a lot of single target and AoE damage. And even in the late game, guys, you actually use her for hunt one-shot teams for like Kades and Azimnak and even Banshee if you want. So if you actually invest into her early game, you'll actually get a lot of return later on. Next, we have Mercedes. So Mercedes... Uh, this is going to be after her, not her specialty change, but her transformation. If you beat episode 3, you'll actually upgrade her form. Then she becomes very powerful as a AoE damage dealer. But honestly, even if you don't unlock that form, very powerful still as an AoE damage dealer anywhere where there are a lot of earth units or just where you need a lot of AoE damage is very good. Champion Zerato, king of hell raid. He is the best damage dealer for hell raid. You can basically slot him into hell raid and even... Um, auto hell raid with him you have the soul weavers you need around him and for azimnak 11 he can actually solo it and get you a lot of azimnak here for free uh and you can also bring three fodder with him along there as well so you can actually fodder farm as well as farm azimnak 11 um unfortunately you can't farm azimnak 13 with him so he's only really good in azimnak very very early on but late game he's very good for hell raid for that reason he's very powerful there's a lot of bosses in late game adventure, which also have a lot of debuffs, which makes him very, very good. Challenger Dominion, guys, actually a very powerful PvE unit. Most people think she's only good for cleaving for PvP, but she's actually very strong in PvE. She has a crit chance buff for your entire team. If you actually make her the fastest, she works kind of similarly to how Furious does on your Wyvern teams, where you'll sh you'll actually only need 50% crit chance on your units. And she's very good because if you actually manual PvE, if you Soul Burner S1, she does a crazy, crazy amount of damage. A long time ago, people would actually one-shot normal raid bosses. You just defense break. 
Uh, Challenger, Challenger Dominion takes her turn. Soul Burns her S1 with one shot bosses. Extremely powerful single target damage dealer. Uh, she's a little bit worse than Commander Lorena in terms of autoing, but for manual gameplay, I find her a little bit better. Blaze Dingo, very, very underrated. He's very good in Azimac. You can use him pretty much anywhere you need a single target and AoE damage dealer. He's also very good at making your uh, team survive because he's built in healing. I think he's very underrated. Furious, King of Wyvern, you know, can't really leave him out of the very powerful tier because he's just so good. He makes your Wyvern run so much easier if you pair him with a 3-star unit known as Mui. You basically have the perfect composition for Wyvern and you just slot in Angelica and whatever 5-star or 3-star or 4-star damage that you have for Wyvern. Next we have Kitty Clarissa, very powerful for Abyss Floors, very good for Ancient Inheritance, and also very good for uh, areas of content where you need a lot of cleansing as well. She has a lot of dual attacks, which makes her very good with Terranor Guard. I think she's very underrated. If you're looking for a very high Hollow Child score, you basically need Kitty Clarissa um, on your team. She's very good. And then Sid, very powerful single target damage dealer. Very powerful in PvP, but he also does a lot of damage in PvE. Also has a defense break, so he's pretty good. Now breaking into the decent tier list. Only three units here, uh, but they're still pretty decent. First off, we have Bloodblade Karen, very similar to Free Spiritaria in that she can also uh, farm adventure for you, which is also used in some hunt one-shot teams, and she can also be used in some areas of content where you need like an AoE damage dealer that's pretty tanky. Next, we have Great Chief Kiwana, going to be used mostly for Kades and other areas of content where you need a single target damage dealer. For the most part, relegated to Kades though, so she could technically be in the specific niche tier, uh, but I think you can actually use her as a damage dealer in other areas of content as well. She's not that bad. You can use her in Hall of Trials as well as Ancient Inheritance as well. Akadia's guys, um, she's decent, but honestly, she's also kind of like a don't use unit because the fact that there's so many good Soul Weavers in the game. But just looking at her kit, she's a decent unit for PvE. Just keep in mind there's a lot of better units out there like Angelica, even 3-star options in Angelic Montmorency, and even like Mascot Hazel and SE Doris. So definitely don't want to use her, but she's still by no means a bad unit. She's pretty decent. Now talking about the specific niches, we're just going to go very, very quickly through the list and talk about where you want to use these units. These units will only be used in basically one area of the content. Uh, so we're basically going to talk about where you're going to use them. So first off, we have ML Rin. Very good against Hell Queen because she can actually steal the greater attack and defense buff. Outside of that, you won't really use her. Next, we have General Purchase. This guy is very good for Wyvern. The only thing is, you don't really need him anymore because you have Mui. Uh, Mui kind of does what General Purchase does, but better. Uh, but if you don't want to use Mui and you want to use General Purchase, um, there is a reason to do that because he'll actually make your runs faster. So General Purchase teams in Wyvern will be the fastest non-one-shot Wyvern teams. You run him with Cigarette, with Furious, and Alexa, and your team will be very, very fast. Uh, but you don't have to do it. But if you want to do it, you know, he is a good option for speeding up your runs, especially if you don't have the gear to actually start one-shotting it. Next, we have Auxiliary Lots and Green Lots. These units are mostly going to be used in Ice Expedition. You can actually manual that expedition and use them, and then you'll score very, very high. Out of that, you won't really use them that much. You can use them in some Abyss Floors where you want some CR manipulation, but for the most part, not really used. Rose and Crozette Wyvern Tanks. Rose is very good because she has attack buff. Crozette is good because you can make it so that you can 3-man Wyvern 13 with his attack down. Uh, so you know, if you're looking to fodder farm, I guess, in Wyvern as well, Crozette is a good option, but you don't really need to anymore. Fighter Maya, Hollow Trials God. She's very, very good, especially in the weeks where knights are very powerful. She can pretty much carry your score up to SSS+. Plus. Shuri and Silk and Wanderer Silk. These are all going to be used in Abyss Floors where you are manipulating CR. They can be used very, very effectively against bosses, which you need to stop from taking turns, such as like Dark Corvus and even the Mushroom boss floor. I forget which which one it was. They're very good there, but outside of that, not really going to be used that much. Like I said, specific niche, you only really want to get these to 4-star at, or not 4-star, 5-star at max, and not really use them for too long because they're only really good in certain areas of content, which, you know, don't really matter too much in the long run. And now we're getting into the Hunt one-shot tier. So these units, pretty self-explanatory as well. Used in Hunt one-shot teams. Clarissa used as a AoE damage dealer for Wyvern one-shot on the first wave. Karn used as a defense breaker in Wyvern on the boss. Watcher Shuri can be used in pretty much Kades and Azimak. He's very, very powerful there, and even Golem. Celestial Mercedes can be used in um, Azimak. Kades one-shot for the first wave. Shadow Rose is a defense breaker for Banshee and can also be used in Azimak, I believe. And I, don't, I think she can be used in Kades as well. Sinful Angelica is the best Wyvern uh, attack buffer for Wyvern one-shot, and like I said, Leo could not be found, so rest in peace Leo, I have no idea where he is, but he would be here in the hunt one-shot 
tier for the Banshee 13 defense break on the boss. Now, looking at the don't use tier, I'm not going to talk about these units. Basically, don't use them. They're going to be used mostly in PvP or they're just bad and they need buffs. Uh, so you don't really want to use them in PvE for the most part. Some of these units in the PvE tier list actually are going to be used in PvP as well. For example, Auxiliary Watts. Uh, even like Screen Sid, very powerful, Chandra Dominion, like I said, and even Bloodblade Karen, they might be very good there as well. Uh, but for the most part, you know, everyone else in the don't use tier list, they're not going to be using PvE, tier, uh, PvE at all, exclusively for PvP or just bad units. That being said, I hope this tier list helps you guys out, guys, in choosing what to, you know, invest into for your four-star units. If you guys want to see more tier lists like this or want me to update some tier lists I've uploaded in the past a long time ago, let me know in the comments down below. I do plan to update my tier list every, like, three or four months or so because Epic 7, Smilegate has been doing a lot of balance changes lately, so a lot of things to keep changing, right? For example, um, you know, for PvE here, like, Free Spirit Terra wasn't as good, but with the release of Katie's, she actually jumped up a lot because of the fact that Katie's one-shot is a lot easier with her and stuff like that, so stuff like that we're going to be updating for the future. That being said, I hope you guys found this video helpful, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.